Austin City Limits. It's a program that's been around for 35 years. It's actually the longest running music program on television right now in the history of television. And it's produced right here in the local studios of KLRU-TV. Invariably, I don't care where I'm at in this country or in the world, people will ask about Austin City Limits and people know about it. It's amazing. Even the, you know, the known bands and the big stars, Johnny Cash came through and he was real nervous because he was like, oh, this is, this is real TV. I'm David Huff, I'm the audio director for Austin City Limits and I've been with the program since uh, the pilot 35 years ago. We did the pilot back in 1974 with uh, Willie Nelson and his band and it was all rental gear that we pulled together cobbled together across town and it was pretty exciting just to throw that together and get that out and sent that off to PBS and they went oh this is interesting can you send us a, can you send us another one and we did that uh, then, then, then they said give us 10 shows and we went okay we'll do 10 shows and that'll be that Ironically, there has been very little change, which is part of its uh, appeal to people, because the key to the show is the artist and the music. It always has been. That's why artists come back. That's why they love doing the show, the intimate environment where they can really connect with the audience and vice versa. So our preparation in the earlier days was uh, based around, everything was analog back then. We were recording on 16 tracks and having to have and our console really wasn't big enough back then. We had auxiliary boards. We had to cobble all that together, beg and borrow. Now it's evolved to where we're digital. We can go up to 56 tracks on the new endo. And the new endo is a major part of the audio recording and distribution for Austin City Limits. And from start to finish, all the way to the broadcast public, uh, AMD processors are used in everything we do. So this is the new endo here. We pretty much use it as a tracking re recorder. It's very rare that we come in to do any editing. But there are times where say the bass player hits the wrong note and he asks us, can I come in and overdub that, that third part? And I'll say, well, did you play it right the first, you know, the second time? He says, oh yeah, well, I'll f I can copy and paste and, and fly that in. Now the folks at AMD, they're musicians themselves and they understand all of the details that come into getting a nice sounding, you know, recording down to tape. And they understood that the new window system and based on the dual Opteron is, is the way to go. Bright light suddenly came on, like, oh yeah, this is, this is going to be fun, this is great. We don't have to halt the, the recording at all. They can just roll along and record the whole thing nonstop. That helps. Uh, it, it helps maintain the continuity of the show, something the producer is very serious about. Uh, he wants the performer to feel like it's a performance. He wants the audience to experience it like a performance, not like it's a television show. We're currently building a new facility that's going to be downtown. It's going to be another new new space, all new. We're going to have all new equipment down there. And we're really looking forward to AMD's you know, helping us out, on filling that out. At the same time, we're going to be making that transition into multi-stream high-definition editing. And that is incredibly processor intensive. Processors and the uh, AMD editors would greatly facilitate the style that the editors want to use, a multi-camera approach uh, that takes a huge amount of processing with eight high definition program streams. Having it all pre-ingested into a nonlinear editor would really speed that process up tremendously. AMD's involvement with the show has helped the show run smoother. Uh, the artist is, uh, gets a better experience out of it because there are, are less interruptions. We don't have to halt the performance in order to change out tapes, change out discs upstairs. All of that runs quicker and smoother, and so everyone enjoys the performance better, the audience, the artist, and the technical support people as well. The biggest challenge for technology is that normally creative people are not always technical. And so if the devices are particularly complex or they're slow and you're waiting on them, then that kind of puts a damper on the creative spirit. Um, the faster the processors and the, fa and the more seamless that the process is, the easier it is for an artist just to be creative. And you know, family and friends ask me, you know, how can you do the same job over and over again for so long? And my, you know, my response to that is, is, well, you know, I might be in the same place, but as time goes on, everything around me is changing. The technology changes. And here's a classic example of the AMD and the new window coming in. It's like, ah, oh, a new toy. 
the music changes from year to year too, as well. So as soon as I get bored with one, you know, t style of music, here comes another one along. It's like, oh wow, this is great. I can't imagine I would do anything else. I mean, I, I feel like I retired 35 years ago, and I'm just playing.